All right, scholars, let's take a look at this Forces in One Dimension online video game. So, what's the goal of the game? Well, the goal of the game is to learn how forces affect motion. And you have different objects. Here we have a filing cabinet. We can apply a force to it. The applied force is in blue. The friction force is in red. We have different objects, refrigerator, textbook, crate, sleepy dog, and I think that's just about it there. Um, so when we apply a force to sleepy dog, if the applied force is greater than the friction force, as you can see here it is, then we will have a net force, and that's shown in green up above where it says total force right up here. And when we have a net force, then we will get acceleration, always. So let's bring back Sleepy Dog. And basically what I want you to do with this is play around with it. Get a feel for how force affects motion. If an object is moving to the right, but then you apply a force to the left, what happens to the object? As you can see there, it decelerated and then accelerated to the, to the left. So, um, and see how it depends on the mass of it. If it were a refrigerator instead, done this plenty of times in my life, trying to move a fridge, Ugh, it's very difficult. There's a lot of friction between it and the floor, but with enough force, if we can get the force to exceed the friction, oh my gosh, are we going to be able to do it? I don't know. I'm off the chart here. I'm off the scale. Maybe not. Maybe if I reduce friction. So we can do that. We have some choices here. For one, I can turn friction off if I wanted to. With friction off, all I have to do is apply a little bit of force, and even with that little bit of force, since there is no friction resisting, that will be my net force, whatever the applied force is. And as you can see, it is accelerating. And I say it's accelerating because it's getting faster and faster and faster um, at a slow rate, but it is getting faster and faster and faster, as you can see. Um, if we want to keep friction on but just reduce it, we can go down here to the bottom, I think. More controls. And um, yeah, we can change the coefficient of static friction. We can change the coefficient of kinetic friction. Kinetic friction is also called sliding friction. And we can change the mass of the objects. We can change the, the um, force of gravity. In our lab today, we discovered that gravity on Earth has a force of 9.8 newtons for every kilogram of mass. But we can make that what it is on the moon if we wanted to, which is 1.6. Or we can make it like what it is on Jupiter, 25.4, somewhere up there. Or maybe it's less than that, 22 point something. All right, so those are some choices you can mess around with. I'm going to restore the defaults. And I want to show you one more thing here, graph velocity. Um, this is from what I've been doing already, just playing around with this thing. Let's go to filing cabinet and let's hit clear graph. Are you sure you want it? Clear it? Yes. And um, I'm going to come I'm going to apply a force to the filing cabinet. As you can see, there is no velocity, flat line right along here. But if I apply more force than friction force, like right now, then I will get acceleration. And we can, this, is, this is a good example of constant acceleration because we can see right here it was going up in a straight line. And then I stopped pushing so I can show you the graph. And then friction caused a constant rate of deceleration. So um, if I go the opposite way with it, am I going to get a positive or negative velocity? Let's take a look. Ah, I'm getting negative velocity and getting faster in the negative direction, which is also a negative acceleration. And we can see this line is negative velocity because it's underneath the axis. And it's also um, is getting faster in that direction. So the slope here is negative. Negative slope, that means negative acceleration. So that'd be a case of negative velocity and negative acceleration, getting fast, meaning getting faster in the negative direction. All right, so play around with this. I'm going to ask you to write a paragraph summary of how this demonstrates forces and its effect on motion. So take a look at that link I gave you, and I'll see you tomorrow in class.